Welcome to the Gothic Lore series, in which we will dive into the world and history of our favorite game. Since Gothic underwent several retcons, retroactive changes in the continuity of the story, we will also speculate a bit about certain topics. The subject of today, the headquarters of the thieves, bandits and mercenaries of the colony. The New Camp. A colder wind blows at the foot of the massive mountain range in the western parts of the Valley of Mines, where a huge cave is located along a lakeside. It was here where the water mages and Lee's men set up their new home after they fled from Gomez Grasp. Using the terrain's natural defenses as an advantage, they barricaded themselves into the foothills and canyons, living a mostly independent life in the colony. The new camp, in comparison to the old one, is very decentralized. The living quarters for most of the inhabitants were situated inside a large cavern right next to a dammed up lake. The houses were made of mud, wood, straw and stone and generally were of higher quality than the diggers shacks in the outer ring of the old camp. While the bandits lived on the left and the mercenaries on the right side of the cave, the water mages retreated to the upper areas which were strictly forbidden to enter for the others. There they lived in lithic structures decorated with mystical ornaments and runes. In the center of the cave, a wide hole protected by a grade was used to store the magical ore. Right next to the main cave, sitting on top of an island on the lake, a tavern was built, not just a meeting point for many workers, warriors and visitors from the sect, but also housing a distillery for the camp's famous schnapps. The passage to the eastern canyon was fortified with a watchtower and a gate, which was guarded by Jarvis and other mercenaries, right next to the shelter for the peasants, which was a simple shack made of wood. The path led into a little dale in which the rice terraces were tilled by the farmers and goods were kept in the storage house, overseen by the rice lord and his thugs. In the periphery of the fields, fortified palisades served as the main gate, guarded by a bunch of bandits. At the southern end of the camp, the Free Mine was located, accessible via a path that led through the hunting grounds and mountains. The mine itself was at the bottom of a pit, only known as the Cauldron, which also contained several houses for scrapers and mercenaries. The initial creation of the new camp is still a mystery, but we know that it was the second one to appear in the colony. In fact, we know that the swamp camp was created five years before the fall of the barrier, so in conclusion, the exodus of the future mercenaries would have happened somewhere between the creation of the barrier and the founding of the swamp camp. Eventually, former general of the realm Lee and the water mages, led by Saturas, banded together and founded the new camp. Lee, who was falsely accused of the queen's murder, and the circle of water, who were accidentally trapped inside the barrier, had one thing in common. They wanted their rightful freedom back. The Mages hired Lee and other trusty men as mercenaries to defend their plan to destroy the barrier with a massive amount of magical ore. The mineral was one in the camp's free mine and mainly stored inside the hole of the main cave, but was also used as a payment for the mercenaries. Other founders of the camp were Homer and the Rice Lord, who both helped building the place. It is assumed that the idea of farming rice with the help of a dam was realized later on since houses on the ground of the lake do exist. The rice was an important resource to keep the camp independent and was also used to brew schnapps, which at least the bandits and scrapers were highly fond of. Although they were mostly self-supporting, the bandits and some of the mercenaries kept raiding old camp convoys which traveled to the old mine. At the time the nameless hero arrived, 
The ore heap was nearly big enough to get blown up, but mining operations at the free mine came to a sudden halt when the old mine collapsed and Gomez troops took it over via a hidden mountain pass. After the invading forces got killed by a brave band of fighters led by Gorn and the hero, the new camp regained control over their mining operations. Not much time passed when the Nameless One returned and used the Ore Heap's magic power with the help of Milton to charge the ancient blade Urizil, thus rendering the Ore useless, much to the dismay of the Water Mages. After the fall of the barrier, the camp quickly dissolved when most of the inhabitants went separate ways. Once the mages left the Valley of Mines, they began investigating the earthquakes emitting from the north of Corinus, where they excavated old ruins and found a passage to a forlorn region of the island, which was called Yarkandar. Most of the mercenaries and some of the bandits followed Lee and got hired by Onar, the biggest farmer in Corinus, as protection from the city's militia. The former cave home in the valley, however, was taken over by Finkreg, the Ice Dragon, turning the whole area into a freezing, snow-covered desert. The main pillars of the new camp's economy were two valuable resources, rice and ore. The camp didn't export their ore like Gomez did, but rather saved it and used some of it as pay for the mercenaries, which ignited the trade inside the camp. The free mine, albeit not as elaborate as the old one, still was a great source of ore, but the winding caves were full of minecrawler warriors, a more dangerous subspecies of the insects found in the old mine. The rice, on the other hand, was the staple diet and could also be traded with the other camps, also in form of schnapps, generating another income of ore. The camp was also surrounded by fertile hunting grounds, supporting the diet with scavenger meat, while the lake was a source of fresh water and possibly fish. Even with an abundance of all those resources, some of the bandits and even mercenaries engaged in raids on the old camp's convoys, which delivered goods to the old mine. Quentin and his bandits, a splinter group of the new camp which was located in the northern mountains, kept mostly to themselves but participated in those assaults on a regular basis. In contrast to the other camps, the new one didn't follow a strict hierarchy, so it was attracting a lot of convicts who wouldn't accept a subordinate role under Gomez. Here, no guards existed that demanded protection money from the inhabitants or would intervene in fights. Still, the camp was made up of different guilds. The lowest social class were the field workers and scrapers. Most of the new arrivals in the camp were forced to work on the fields while a minority of others helped on their own accord. The terraces were overseen by a man known as the Rice Lord, one of the original founders of the camp. His enforcers, a band of thugs under the lead of Lefty, would ensure the steady influx of workforces. Scrapers, on the other hand, had it generally better. Paid with 50 ore pieces in the month, they also could live in proper houses, albeit right inside the cauldron at the top of the mine. Scrapers also got security equipment and meals for free, while diggers in the old camp had to buy theirs. The bandits were a loose pack of vagabonds and hunters being tolerated by the mercenaries and the mages. They had no leader, but rather a representative named Loris, a skilled thief and fighter. All of them were tolerated for one reason. Lee needed the man strength to fight off the old camp's guard in case they would attack. Even though the bandits were less skilled fighters than the mercenaries, their sheer number would boost the new camp defenses immensely. Their armor was comprised of leather and pelts, decorated with wraps of blue color. Heavy bandits even enhanced their armors with metal plates and spikes. 
The mercenaries, on the other hand, although being in smaller numbers, were the main defensive force in this new settlement. Under the lead of the king's former General Lee, they were trained in combat to defend the plans of the water mages. Mainly located in the large cave, they also defended the camp's periphery and the free mine in the southern mountains. Skilled both in melee and ranged combat, they were foes to be reckoned with. Daily trained in the arts of war under Cord and sometimes even Lee himself. Heavy two-handed weapons or swift one-handed blades were their weapons of choice, while most of them used bows in ranged combat. A heavy mercenary was armored almost completely in plate. Leg protection, braces and a thick chest piece with large pauldrons displaying the camp's iconic blue colors. For the harsh and cold climate of the western mountains, pelts were worked into their armor to keep them warm. The light mercenary armor, on the other hand, was just a banded armor, minus the chest piece, but with one additional shoulder pad. The mightiest guild within the camp, however, were undoubtedly the mages of the Circle of Water, who took part in the initial creation of the barrier. As masters of water and ice magic, not a single convict stood in their way. While their fiery counterparts stayed in Gomez's vicinity, they decided to leave the castle in order to pursue the goal of breaking out of the colony, in which they were trapped since the barrier expanded mysteriously. Like the fire mages, they wore long ceremonial robes, albeit blue in color, and a dark tippet or stole as well. They also wore an additional layer of fabric over the shoulders, like a mantle. Satura's robes were more elaborate, with additional ornaments of white and gold. The biggest question regarding the new camp is how it initially got founded. It is known that the fire mages did not care too much about being trapped inside the barrier since they lived a lush life within the thick walls of the old camp's fortress. The Circle of Water, on the other hand, had other plans since their nomadic culture commanded them to return to the continent of Myrtana, joining their tribes. Not just their religion, but also the fact that they were trapped inside the dome by accident was the driving force behind their interest in breaking out of the colony. It is speculated that they contacted former General Lee very early on, since they knew about his position in the King's army, his expertise and the conspiracy regarding the Queen's death. Secret meetings between Lee and Saturas are plausible in order to explain their exodus into the western mountains, since they needed protection to go on with their studies. It is likely that riots broke out in the old camp when General Lee gained more and more sympathizers and followers, not willing to serve the king anymore by working underground mining the precious ore. The location of the camp itself also leaves some questions open. We know that the lake was artificially created when the settlers arrived in the canyon, but what about the large cavern? Nothing hints at it being carved out of the massive stone, so we come to the conclusion that it was already existing when the water mages and their followers arrived. Was it home to the local wolves or other beasts that roamed the mountainous region? We don't know for sure, but something is surely off. The Mages' Quarters. They are indeed different compared to the other houses occupied by the mercenaries and bandits. In fact, such an architecture is nowhere else to be found in the Valley of Mines. It could be that these structures are much older than the camp and they already existed when the outcasts arrived. Whoever built them was a keen craftsman which ultimately leaves us with two options. The Circle of Water built them by their own, wanting their housing to be more elaborate and elegant, or they predated the Mage's arrival and have therefore a more mysterious background. Who could have built these? The civilization that created the monastery at the cliffside? 
Or maybe even the people who constructed the temple in the swamp? My guess is as good as yours. And if you have any other theories, please let me know in the comments. With this episode coming to an end, I hope you learned something about the outlaws and mages of Team Blue. My name is Vertigo, and I wish you guys a good one.